At Hemogenics, we believe that you should not have to spend time and money developing or optimizing an assay. For this reason, we've developed assays for specific applications that work right out of the box. Welcome to this technical guide on assays for immune cells. I'm Ivan Rich, CEO of Hemogenics, and it's our goal at Hemogenics to provide you with assays that not only work, but provide you with results you can trust. All of our immunoassays uh, measure lymphocyte proliferation or inhibition, which can also be cytotoxicity. Included are, are assays for mixed lymphocyte cultures, also called mixed lymphocyte reactions. All of these assays are non-radioactive. Most laboratories have a plate reader uh, that might be used, for example, for ELISAs. Plate readers can measure absorbance, fluorescence, and some even measure luminescence. We've developed assays for all three types of, of output. The immunolite assays require an absorbance reader, the immunofluor assays a fluorescence plate reader, and the immunoglow assays a plate luminometer. Immunolite 96, Immunofluor 96, and Immunoglow 96 can be used for numerous applications that rely on lymphocyte proliferation. For example, lymphocyte activation, testing unprimed T cells in the presence of antibodies, enterotoxins, mitogens, cellular immune response studies, single cell T lymphocyte cloning studies, testing donor site lymphocyte. Uh, donor lymphocyte infusion samples for stimulation or induction prior to use. Looking at the effect of accessory cells on T cell induction and also co-stimulators. The effect of epitope sequences and novel peptides or proteins. Testing the response to prime T cells and in vitro immunotoxicity studies. The mixed lymphocyte culture assays can be used for one or two-way uh, MLCs or MLRs, allogeneic mixed lymphocyte cultures, cellular immune responses, dendritic cell interactions, as well as mesenchymal stem cell interactions, and agents that activate or suppress the mixed lymphocyte reaction. Now let's take a look at the individual types of readout. First, the immunolite assay. Immunolite assays are based on a customized reagent involving an MTS tetrasolium reduction to produce a soluble formazan product that's measured at 490 nanometers. It's similar to an MTT assay, but it does not require a step that solubilizes the formazan product. Results can be read between one and four hours, and plates can be reread at any time during this period. And of course, most laboratories have an absorbance plate reader or colorimetric plate reader. The immunofluor assays detect fluorescence when a GF-AFC substrate, which is a coumarin derivative, is, cleaves, is cleaved by protease activity in living cells. The fluorescent signal that's produced is proportional to the number of cells. It's a single step is a single addition reagent step. The excitation is between 380 and 400 nanometers and the emission is read at 500 uh, and 5 nanometers. Results can be read between 30 minutes and 3 hours. And the assay can be multiplexed using other fluorescent labels so that you can home in on specific uh, immune cell populations. The assay can also be multiplexed with bioluminescence assays. Immunoglow measures the proportional changes in intracellular ATP concentrations when cells proliferate or are inhibited from proliferation. This too involves a single additional addition reagent step that releases intracellular ATP which then reacts with luciferin luciferase to produce bioluminescence in the form of light. light produced, uh, the light produced is measured in a plate luminometer and this is read after 10 minutes. The assays are calibrated, fully standardized and validated.
and they can also be multiplexed with numerous other assay readouts. There is a difference in readout sensitivity with the immunoglow assays being the most sensitive and the immunolite assays the least sensitive. Immunoassays have not been compared to tritiated thymidine assays which are usually used for, uh, for immune cells. However, ATP bioluminescence shows between a hundred and a thousand fold greater sensitivity than an absorbance MTS readout. The ATP bioluminescence sensitivity would be approximately similar to tritiated thymidine, if not greater. Immunoassays have been tested on human, non-human primate and mouse cells, but could also be used with immune cells from many other species. All immunoassays can be used with peripheral blood, dissociated lymphocyte uh, tissues and organs, and lymphocyte subpopulations. So now let's take a look at a few uh, results from these assays. Here you see a comparison between Immunoglow 96 and Immunofluor 96 when normal peripheral blood mononuclear cells are stimulated with either IL-2 alone or CD28 alone, a co-stimulator, or a combination of IL-2 and CD28. This diagram shows that immunofluor 96 can be multiplexed with flow cytometry to analyze the types of lymphocytes that are stimulated with either IL-2 or CD28 alone or with a combination of the IL-2 and CD28. Here we're looking at CD4 antibodies conjugated to PE and CD8 antibodies conjugated to APC. This is a comparison between a bromodeoxyuridine BUDR absorbance assay and Immunoglow 96 for a one-way mixed lymphocyte culture. Again, this is using normal human peripheral blood mononuclear cells from two different individuals, donor A and donor B. Normally, the cells would be irradiated to inhibit proliferation, but we use mitomycin C to inhibit the proliferation. Both donors demonstrate cell proliferation which is drastically inhibited by mitomycin C. When one donor, in this case donor B, is inhibited, the cells from donor A are still allowed to proliferate. The difference, however, between BUDR and our ATP bioluminescence readout is that the ATP assay is calibrated and fully standardized prior to measuring the samples. Unlike BUDR, unlike the BUDR, the BUDR assay and all other absorbance and fluorescence assays for immune cells, Immunoglow allows you to directly compare your results from one day to the next between donors and between assays. Here we see a comparison between uh, BUDR and Immunoglow for a two-way MLC in which both donors are stimulating each other. All of these results illustrate that using radioactive tracers are now completely unnecessary. Furthermore, when you use an ATP bioluminescence assay, you're assured of the most sensitive, non-radioactive readout available. You may also be interested in very primitive cells of the lymphopoietic system. While the prolifer proliferative or inhibitory response of different types of immune cells can be measured using immunoassay kits, detection of primitive stem cells that produce T and B lymphocytes as well as T and B progenitor cells are measured using different assays. These primitive stem and progenitor cells can be detected and measured using either the cameo or halo assays and technical guide videos are available on YouTube on the YouTube channel that describe these assays. So thank you for your attention and we look forward to hearing from you.